Next up, we are going to do our top five each. Top five firefights. All right, for me, I kind of whittled it down that I made some rules for myself. I did too. Both sides shooting at each other, so not like a one-sided thing where nobody yeah. gets to respond. I also excluded artillery and vehicle battles, which effectively eliminated Star Trek from my <laughs> list. So you'll be proud of me, there is no Star Trek on my list. Yet you still mentioned it. Well, you know, what are you gonna do? I also excluded large-scale military battles. Um, now, not like a battle within a battle, maybe, but something that's just a huge cinematic thing. I, I cut those out for me because I wanted smaller firefights. Well, I picked firefight. So first of all, I it couldn't be like one guy, right? If it's a firefight, there should be multiple people shooting back and forth. And okay. I, I know there's better ones filmed than what I picked, but I picked my favorites. Yes, I, I will, these are our favorites, not necessarily the objectively best. These are our favorites. So I, I have a reason for it, so. All right, so what's your number five pick? All right, my number five pick is the uh, the opening shootout from Baby Driver. Oh yeah! Because uh, it's Edgar Wright film and it's set to the music. The gunfire, like as they're <laughs> shooting, it's like with the drum beats of the music and I had never seen that before. I thought that was so brilliant and so creative and that made me so happy. And while the, the firefight itself may be not the most spectacular thing, just the stylized like coolness of mm -hmm. all of the guns going off with mm -hmm. the music was just too cool to like not make my list. So that's my number five. All right. Well, my number five, I'm going back to 1987 RoboCop, and I give the year so you don't get confused because the remake. Eh. Yeah. I mean, it had some good firefights too, but meh. This one was iconic for me growing up. I know I should not have watched this movie growing up, but hey, you know that's the way it is. The Drug Factory. <laughs> he storms in. The guys are making drugs, and he tells them. Come quietly or there'll be trouble. And they say, we're not putting up with that, although they were a bit more explicit. And then bullets started flying. So then Robocop just proceeds to shoot everybody. It's great. And he does the whole thing under fire. They're shooting at him. He don't care. He's made of titanium. It's just it's just a fun scene, like heroic. He's just walking in, you know, White Knight style. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh... Plus, it's got those late 80s blood squib special effects so blood going everywhere it's just fantastic to watch <laughs> so one of my favorite gunfights in a movie is hot shots part do uh it is a comedy movie and there's a great scene where they kind of riff off of a lot of the uh, ultra violent action movies uh, they kind of do a running count where they compare a lot of different ones it's a really cool scene i enjoy it i thought it was funny it's a, one of my favorite uh gunfight scenes of all time because of the tongue-in-cheek humor um, it's not by any means like the you know the most realistic of course that's kind of the whole point it's got that that whole surreal over-the-top humor vibe but it is definitely a uh, firefight slash gunfight scene that you should see if you haven't had the chance to so uh, my number four and I don't know how we do a list without mentioning him is uh, John Wick <laughs> and it's the club scene from John Wick uh, again, if you want to talk about like stylized like mm -hmm. violence, oh my gosh! Just John Wick like working his way through the club <laughs> with people shooting at him, him shooting people, and what they it coined a new phrase, gun foo, gun foo. <laughs> and I mean, how can you not like that? If you haven't seen the John Wicks, like you got to see John Wick, and that was to me just so much fun because of the stylized, you know, mm -hmm. and he's karate chopping and, and actually reloading the gun and yep. oh, yeah. shooting people. And, and I, I just love that to death. So before we go on, read my number nine. Everything in John Wick, that's right. Yeah, so that, I, I was aware of that, but it just, I had some others I liked more that were more fun for me. When talking about firefights or gunfights, um, I mean, you could, if you wanted to make a top list, you could pick almost any scene out of the John Wick movies, one, two, or three. But I've, there's one particular scene in John Wick 3 uh, where uh, John is, it's kind of close to the beginning of the movie. Uh, he's in an antique store where they sell some old uh, military weapons. It looks like they also sell some antique guns. Uh, and they also sell other kinds of weapons there as well, like knives and such. Um, this is definitely on the list as uh, one of the more unique scenes. 
There's a really cool part of it where he has to rebuild a gun out of different other guns. He has to know what parts work together. And he's kind of on a timer where he has, he has to put it all together right before he's about to get attacked. Um, but the reason that this is in the top list is because I recently saw this movie in a movie theater. And there's a particular sequence where they switch to knife throwing. I know it's kind of cheap because this is, you know, firefights, but they switch to knife throwing. And during that sequence, the audience just reacted like I had never experienced in a movie before. There was just every time that there was a, another throwing of a knife or every time someone moved, it was, <gasps> <gasps> and, you know, it seems hokey, but to actually get that reaction out of an audience, that emotional part, that was really cool. And uh, I think that's definitely uh, something that belongs on the list. So I couldn't do this list without the iconic, one of the iconic gunfights I've ever seen, Dirty Harry, the sidewalk scene. He's got a hot dog in one hand, a 44 Magnum in the other. These guys come out of the bank, guns blazing, and they have a little shootout right there. And I say little because he only had six bullets <laughs> and completed the firefight with that. That's all he thinking. needed. Is that fire or six? Yes, shots? and that punchline is one of the most iconic moments probably in cop movie history, certainly. And so it's just, it's a great gunfight. Um, of course, it's got that kind of 70s, like gritty realism. So I, I like that. Well, and I'm not a big fan of, of cop movies or gangster movies and stuff like that. I should be. Mm -hmm. I just never do seem to enjoy them. So I know I left stuff off my list people would be well, upset sure. about because there's like, oh, well, there's all these gangster movies and things that I, I, I didn't get. Another great uh, firefight sequence uh, in a movie, I believe one of, the, one of the ones that really speaks to my generation is probably one of the best ones that we've seen uh, whenever we first saw it was the uh, showdown at the OK Corral from Tombstone. Uh, has, this movie has an amazing cast. It's got some great memorable lines. And this particular sequence where it's, it combines all of the, the legends of the Old West, each doing their own thing. Uh, it's such a cool stylized sequence. Uh, there's some great practical effects that are being used in this movie. It's not incredibly over the top, and uh, everyone just comes together for an action sequence that's, that the movie's been building up to. I think it's probably one of the best uh, Western gunfight sequences that I I can think of. I know people are gonna say, oh, but you gotta go back to the peck and paw, but I don't know. M maybe it's just that this is one of the, the first movies that uh, people my age range had seen that had a, an action sequence that had you on the edge of your seat that was like that in a western movie but just something about it all comes together and it feels so cool but my number three is uh, Desperado uh, Antonio Banderas yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. the opening scene in the bar Cheech is behind the bar and again I think it's like three bad guys is that and the Antonio guitar that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If for nothing else, for the guitar case, he, he sits there like looking for the. Uh, it's a sequel to uh, El Mariachi, mm -hmm. and he, he comes in and he's got the guitar case, and everybody knows that the you know Mariachi's going around with his guitar case full of guns, and he sets the guitar case down. And they're like, "What's in there?" And he's like, "It's a guitar." And they're like, "Just show us." And he opens the lid, and sure enough, there's a guitar in there. And they're like, "Oh, okay." And you hear a click, and the false guitar top like opens up and just <laughs> full of guns and then the firefight ensues yeah. and yeah and it's a great scene with him shooting up the bar and diving yeah. behind tables and but it just again for like personal favorites it just puts a huge smile on my face and it's robert rodriguez so you know the, yeah. the violence is good and i have a surprisingly low number of westerns in my firefights because there are tons of western shootouts that are really great but for some reason they just didn't strike me as being the ones i wanted to go for my number three is the Boondock Saints, the hotel shootout. Uh, of course, you'll remember the scene there, Rope there Toten Charlie, fire. not that one, but that one was great. <laughs> but the Rope Toten Charlie Bronson <laughs> wannabe, and then they fall from the ceiling, bad action movie style, 
hanging upside down and just have this fight. And they're in the middle of the room, so it's just... They're dangling upside yeah. down, spinning. And <laughs> guns ablazing, and the mobsters try to shoot back, but they were so surprised they just didn't really stand much of a chance. And it's just it's just a fun scene. So I had the Boondock <laughs> Saints, and again, it's one of those pretty much every scene in Boondock Saints. It's uh, great. <laughs> it was one of the ones I picked, but didn't, didn't make the list. I do love that, and, and the teasing him about needing the rope. And, well, I need the rope. <laughs> yeah, I love that. A really good firefight scene in a movie. This one's going to be kind of cheap, uh, but I would. It's going to be a twofer. I'm going to put both of these together as a single entry. Uh, there's a movie a couple years back that came out, Hardcore Henry, and then there's a movie that I guess now is probably a little over ten years old, Shoot 'Em Up. And I would put both of these movies together in the same category because the entire film is one continuous sequence of a single gunfight or a single firefight action sequence, however you want to put it. Um, Hardcore Henry has got a first person feel for the entire movie. It will definitely make you nauseous. It will definitely give you a headache. But I can't really say that I've seen an hour and a half uh, long shot of first person footage where it was just a non-stop action scene outside of this movie so that's definitely cool uh and then shoot em up uh starring clive owen that one has a really awesome soundtrack it's very stylized i don't know if it's a continuous non-stop uh, action scene because it's been a while since i've seen it but it is i can't really pick any particular firefight scene from it uh, just because it seemed like it was action from the beginning to the end it was a very long very lengthy uh, non-stop action sequence and uh, if you haven't seen the movie and you want something that's that's going to feel like a very long music video and have uh, adrenaline an adrenaline rush the whole time that's definitely on there my number two is the lobby scene from the matrix oh for just nice. sheer wanton destruction um, they blew apart the hotel lobby into like or building lobby into just teeny tiny little pieces. There were so much bullets and explosions, and then you get the whole matrixy, you yeah. know, uh, uh, bullet time stuff. And oh, it was just so cool. And uh, if you ever watch any of the like the behind the scenes of the making of stuff, the fact that it was all oh like. Gosh. Like practical effects, and they're really <laughs> blowing that stuff up and it knocking took chunks of column out. And two hours to reset that room after each take. Oh, I don't doubt it. They had to rebuild the room because they blew it all apart. And you just stole my number one. It's that, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. That is just a fantastic shootout, just for style. And well, everything. the only I thought, I mean, stylistically, it might be the coolest like shootout it's of just all time. Cool. <laughs> but my number one is just because I like one better. Wait, wait, then, I gotta get my number two. First. I know, I know. Okay, I'm not okay. gonna do my, but, but that's the reason it's number two and not number one. Ah. It's because my number one just has more of sentimental yeah. value to me than, than The Matrix does. So my number two, I'm going with, um, I just forgot his name, Quentin Tarantino, Inglorious Bastards, The Basement Shootout. Oh. This is the most stressful shootout I've ever <laughs> seen. And part of it is because of the, about what, 15 minutes leading up to the moment? Oh, because they're so having tense. this conversation. and So tense. I, I watched the clip of it just, because I watched all of these just to remind myself whether they really were good shootouts or not, which is why Equilibrium didn't make the list because it wasn't as cool as I remembered it being. <laughs> um, that's another matter entirely. But just the tension built in that scene, I just started like getting the shakes just watching without <laughs> even context. And so it's the most stressful and when it happens, it's so fast. Just boom. and. I, I love it because it's awesome, but also kind of hate it. That's why I didn't make number one because it's so tense that I just I, I feel sick watching it even. But it's it's just a great it's just a great firefight. <laughs> chaos, total chaos. Well, since we already kind of spoiled your number one, do you have anything else you want to? I about? do, and I, I we'll, have. We'll come back to the. Okay. okay. As we want to, but do you want to say anything about the Matrix since that was your number one? Uh, the, uh that you didn't already get to say. No, it's just that it's so fun to watch, and again, Practical Explosions, because it's, most stuff, they, they rely so heavily on CGI. Nothing wrong with good CGI. Never would complain about good CGI. Good but CGI. there's just something about when all the just junk is flying through the air, you just, it's just great to watch. It's just fun to watch. So if we're talking about high budget, over the top, 
you know, hundreds of thousands of rounds of ammunition flying off, um, big scale, ep, you know, epic proportions. If that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a firefight, then there is a movie that came out within the past few years that I think definitely deserves recognition and being on this list is having one of the greatest firefight scenes. And what's great is that the, the hero in the movie isn't even holding a gun the entire scene. And I'm talking about the no man's land scene from Wonder Woman. So one of the things I absolutely love about this scene is that it is such an intense firefight scene set in World War One. Now you don't see a whole lot of, of action movies that focus on World War One. More often, they focus on World War Two, and it's easy to see why. Uh, there's some really clear-cut bad guys in World War Two. World War One is a little more ambiguous, uh, and I think that's what this movie. If you've seen Wonder Woman, you'll understand that's a big part of what it's about. But another thing that's so great is just the emotional impact of no one really wanting to deal with this firefight like no matter how you look at it what side you're on it was ugly and people were just trying to find a way through it and she, you know Wonder Woman comes in with a completely different approach and she brings in a ray of light to kind of guide people through that moment but everything about this scene uh, even the even the animal actors the the people the the way that the set is set up the mud the grime the uh the trenches everything about it it just feels so depressing and awful going into it and then once the bullets start flying and wonder woman heads into battle and they just start deflecting off of her at that moment everything turns around and it's one of the things I like about this firefight is because at the end of it, you don't really feel like, oh my gosh, like everyone's dead. At the end of it, you feel relieved. You feel energized. And it has such a positive outcome at the end of it that that's got to be one of my favorite uh, firefight scenes of all time. Uh, in a, and it's in a pretty recent movie. So uh, definitely get a chance to go look at it. If you, for whatever reason, skip seeing Wonder Woman, that was a bad decision. Go see it, go see this scene, it's amazing. There's this huge problem in cinema today. Mm -hmm. There's a huge problem in television today, and it's storytelling. Yeah. Somewhere along the lines, we've kind of lost the art of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And my number one is a Western, and it's at the end of the movie, and it's because there's so much, like the movie just builds and builds and builds and builds mm -hmm. and builds and builds, and then there's this shootout at the end. And it's from the Young Guns, which I... Oh, yeah, yeah that's a good choice. And so there's the, the gunfight at the house, yes. and they all get trapped in this house. We're not trapped. They're, they go to see their lawyer. Mm -hmm. But there's this buildup, right? There's this journey that each one takes, and there's all this character development. And you learn about the guys, and you, you come to either like them or hate them, depending on, I guess, your perspective. And then at the end, they go to see the lawyer, and they get in the lawyer's house. And, yeah. and the lawyer's a good guy. He's just trying to do what's right, and his <laughs> wife's in there. And then the law shows up, like... All of it. All of them, yeah. Like they bring out the turning wagons over in the street and they got Gatling guns and they're like, y'all come out or, you know, we're blowing this place down. And they're like, no, we're, you know, we, I, of course, Billy the Kid always has something smart out like yeah. you say, like you never take us alive. And they proceed to have this massive gunfight between mm -hmm. the house and the street. Yeah. Basically with, again, just bullets flying everywhere. But just the way it was shot and the emotional impact it had on me. Mm -hmm. And and I love Westerns and the, I love the Young Guns way more than I, I should probably yeah. based on everybody <laughs> else's opinion. But uh, but just watching that build up to it. Yeah. And then I was, it was literally that yeah. you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they're not going to make it. Like, how are they going to make it out of yeah. that? And to me, that made it my number one pick for a firefight because I was more emotionally in, invested in that than, than anything else. Well, I'm going to pinch hit a number one since we stole the, the Matrix, okay. which was my favorite number well, one. Well, you guys, you got extra ones here. We can talk about this. In Clear and Present Danger, which is like 92 yeah, that's another one. 94, I'm sorry, the motorcade ambush. There, There is a bit, and they're in South America somewhere, but they're in, I think, four or five just big white SUVs, and they're so they're driving around town with an ambassador and Jack Ryan. So if you like the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan stuff, this is one of the better ones because Harrison Ford. But 
they're driving down and suddenly this bus comes in front of them and a rocket propelled grenade blows up the car in front and people just come out of every window and just start shooting. And the, the motorcade is light armored, can't stand up to the grenades. So they start driving back, trying to get out of the street because it's a very tight space. There's no room to turn around. And then another bus blocks them in on the back. So, and, and more grenades come down, the, the cars start getting blown to bits. And so as the windows, the bullet resistant windows get blown out, all the security guys start shooting back. So it's just this huge firefight in a very confined space. Apparently that's a thing for me, but it's just very tense, very fun to watch. Harrison Ford, can't go wrong. And I'm afraid that's all our time. So no honorable mentions today, but thank you so much for watching Screen Reader Stream. And remember, don't take your kids to the movies on Tuesday nights because that's when we go.